Hello, what it do, what it do? All right, all right, all right. So before I get started, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys know the results of the polls. This is gonna be the format for this channel moving forward until I decide to change it again. All right, so starting next week, we're gonna be doing, we already started the, the daily collective reading. So obviously you guys like that, we're gonna continue that. We're going to be doing the daily collective reading. We'll also be starting the monthly readings and we'll continue with the weekly readings by Zodiac. So you'll receive the um, individual Zodiac reading. So if you're, I don't know, Taurus, I'm going to say Taurus. If you're a Taurus, you're going to get to a Taurus reading. Um, if you're fucking Sagittarius, you're going to get to Sagittarius reading. I feel like I keep saying the same signs because it's, it's predominantly in my chart. But anyway, so... <laughs> Um, that'll start next week. We'll also start doing the bonus readings. Um, pick a card reading and the twin flame readings were, um, highest in votes. They won the polls. So we'll start those as well next week. I'm not sure if we'll do both of those, um, next week, but one of those will be available for you next week. All right. So let's get started. This will be for the week. These are weekly readings. This will be for June 20th through the 27th. We're starting with air signs. Hold up. Hold up, wait a minute. Why is this upside down? All right. So let's get started. We're going to pull three cards of guidance. Okay. This is for my air signs. We're going to pull one for each sign, like I would do for the daily collective reading for the element. I mean, like I would do for the elements of reading. All right. So this is for Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. This is for June 20th through June 27th, 2020. Give me one card of guidance for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Give me one card of guidance. Give me one card of guidance for Gemini. That's too many. Give me one card of guidance. They're going to make me take two. Say, so you're going to take these goddamn cards. All right, so we got the cards out for Gemini. I'm going to put all the cards out and then I'm going to read what we have. Okay, give me uh, one card of guidance for. I guess I gotta read two because I literally was about to say two and two popped out. So, fuck it. Give me one card of guidance for two. <laughs> hey, Faye, you want one? We're gonna give you two today. Two today. All right, let me get my glasses. And I, <laughs> I haven't answered my comments from the from yesterday's um, video yes, yet because I haven't got to my um, paperwork. I do, I have time set apart. Whatever. Anyway, so someone said. <laughs> We need to get you some new glasses. Y'all, I know my glasses done been through them. I done sat on them about three times. Um, I need them to read. I need this to see, but I need these to read. So, for now, we gonna be alright. I might I might get some context, so really and truthfully. So, let's read what we have for Gemini. Gemini, we have the ring. And we have the destroyer. God damn. So, let's start with the ring. Shit. I'm guessing that's a tool. Mm -hmm. 179. The ring. The ring is an image of connectedness. Rather than viewing life as linear, as a series of progressive achievements, the ring challenges challenges us to sense the silical infinite nature of our world and experiences why are you creeping around me boy go sit down <laughs> i'm sorry y'all all right beginnings and endings fall by the wayside as we practice seeing ourselves as part of the cosmic circulatory of creation Cir circular circularity of creation fuck it for this reason it is no surprise a ring is worn on the finger to represent eternal love that surpasses space time and worldly things so much can be projected onto this archetypal image because it because it mimics the earth's orbit around our great sun and the intimate bond between two lovers it is a micro so for some of you guys with the ring and the store there could be a wedding or a marriage that is being destroyed okay this card calls us a deepened connection with self, other, and the world at large. Meanwhile, there may be a literal ring waiting to adorn your finger. Okay, then. All right, so when in light, this card represents connectedness, 
humility, sacred cycles. But when in dark, this represents unconscious repetition and starving for connection. So some of you guys could either be destroying this ring, this um, symbol of love, which could be your marriage. Your marriage is a symbol of eternal love. Um, could be destroying the ring. Somebody could be throwing a motherfucking ring away, like throwing that bitch down the street or something. I don't know. I didn't. Okay, I pawned it. Fuck out of here. I did. And I told him. I pawned it. <laughs> All right. Somebody, I know somebody, it's, it's a man out there that's mad. They're going to be like, you were on for that. Shit, I bought it. The fuck? Anyway, so the story I did, I bought, I bought it because I was not as smart as I am today. <laughs> Let's see what we have for Destroyer. I was in love. I thought I was. All right, I wasn't. All right, the Destroyer, the final of the three archetypes in the trio of existence, has necessary yet painful work to do in the world. Culturally, we have an aversion to endings, and we hang on to the permanence as a signifier of success. So some of you guys have been hold two, two, two. Some of y'all been holding on to a relationship, a connection, something as a symbol of what it's supposed to be. Like you're holding on to an image as opposed to really holding on to something that is solid, eternal, like love. So some of you guys, I feel like that connection is destroyed now or about to be destroyed. Okay. All right. Yet the destroyer pulls the rug out from underneath relationships, jobs, homes, and all forms of security. It's the part of us that wants things to things to end. It's a painful orientation. I'm sorry. It's painful orientation is to uncover our true purpose. The destroyer does not let us linger long in comfort, as it knows not much happens in the in that realm. With its piercing eyes and with its piercing eyes, it seeks out stagnancy from a distance, and the rest becomes history. In the old myth. What the fuck is wrong with my mouth today? All right. In the old myths, this is the moment when heads begin to roll. The ground opens and the castle crumbles. Hold on for the ride. The, the destroyer has arrived. So when in light, this card represents swift and precise blows that redirect our life. So this is like the tower. Okay. There could be a, a proposal. There could be a bond that is breaking, coming crumbling apart when in dark this represents self-destruction negativity unwillingness to rebuild okay I feel like i had to close the book on that guy damn jim and i wish i got going on i feel like i did a whole reading of two cards that's why i like these cards all right so moving on to libra we got the animal i don't know <laughs> let me stop talking all right animal Ninety-nine. Boy, I just got deja vu, y'all. I swear to God, I just got deja vu. All right, we are mammals. The hair on, the hair on our chest and between our legs remind us so. Did they, did they really just put that? Everybody ain't got no hair between their legs. <laughs> okay, we try. We try hard to deny our, re our unrefined animal animalistic nature, yet through this archetype, we tap into power and direction. Activating the animal within means reawakening our relationship to nature in the most broad and embodied sense. Drinking from waterfalls, roaring at the moon, opening eyes underwater, eating berries from the vine. The life force of our planet begs us to set down the devices, the constraints, the social constructs, and remember the warm blood that pulses through our veins. An animal longs for breath, food, procreation, and physicality. <laughs> it wants soil under our nails and starlight on our skin. If all this sounds terribly unsophisticated to you, take note that all that is said that Take note that it is said that when Buddha became enlightened, he roared like a great lion. When in light, this card represents vital, elemental, alive, and dancing. But when in dark, this represents savagery, pent-up emotion, and lashing out. Okay. I like the animal now. I ain't gonna lie to see <laughs> The king. Who's been talking about my baby? Anyway, alright, so let's see here what we have for the king. 85 where you at now so i'm trying to say trying to tell you all right if our lives are imagined as a kingdom containing the entire spectrum 
spectrum of human experience, the king presides over it all. Through the lens of the king, we assess the state of our land, make decisions, and rule accordingly. Therefore, the king must be thoroughly and regularly vetted so, so as to avoid corruption. Recognize the dual nature of the king. He is either seated in benevolence or in strength, guiding you toward peace, or he is oppressing the weak out of a need to control. There is not much middle ground. Some think of the king as the ultimate expression of the ego. Yet the great kings of mythology and history serve from an egoless place. They take their throne with grace and humility, knowing the divine uses them as a channel to heal deep and long-standing discrepancies in the kingdom. When in light, this represents benevolence, divine leadership, service, and nobility. But when in dark, this card can represent oppression, misuse of power, and corruption. So with this animal and king now some of you guys could be very much trying to be in control of a situation misusing your power or you could be the opposite libra very diplomatic you could be taking on a diplomatic stance within a situation in order to gain control for you to be able to you know flow forward move forward all that good jazz all right so let's see what we have here for aquarius the first one we have is the prayer i say a little prayer for you Y'all, I love that song. From the moment I wake up, I have a whole little, like a whole band playing in my head when I hear it. I do not see the prayer, which bothers me. There it is, 195. I was like, why don't I see it? These words in this book are so freaking small like even with my glasses i'd be like what <laughs> all right what is prayer we are in a state of prayer when we are in a state of prayer and what is prayer when we are when when are we in a state of prayer and when are we not to whom or what do we pray archetypical archetypally the practice of prayer has been with us since the dawn of time as a remedy for the um omnipresent self-centered thinking that spins toward spins us toward illusion prayer leads us beyond our ego as we move from our little story to the big one some say we are in a state of prayer anytime we are not we are not the center of our own thoughts others say prayer is a natural result of gratitude perhaps it is simply surrender or service whatever prayer is for you this card reminds us of its importance get quiet this card reminds us of its importance get quiet low humble and soft bow and touch the ground as your heart lifts to the sky though it may be uncomfortable it is time nothing else would do so some of you guys right now you're needing to kind of make reverence you needed to really pay homage get down you know be grateful speak some things say some things what the fuck is that i don't know what that is all right so is something out here let's go to the next one we got the poet Y'all know I'll be all over the place. Sorry. 75. Especially when my energy hot, I'll be like, ah, that's that Gemini rising coming out of me. All right. <laughs> the poet works to feel immensely and not be afraid. They must seek out truth in the darkest corners of the world and carry it back for all to see. The unique capacity resides within us all, regardless of our relationship to creativity. When the poet energy is present, there is a call for deep honesty and reflection, for seeing the big picture within the little ones. The poet rides effortlessly between the personal and universal. It's possible that others may not seem to listen or care about the poet's work, but do not be discouraged. The words of the poet ring true for centuries to come, soothing the wounds of despair and violence that captivates our world. The poet's work is never finished. Find your voice and trust that the wind will carry it. When in light, this card represents clairvoyant, wise, and timeless. But when in dark, this represents harmful words, sharp tongue, and thwarted creativity. Whew. So some of you guys, I feel like you may be praying like through your words. If you're if you're if you're a person that's into poetry or you're in a space of writing, you may be speaking intentions or praying through your words at the moment. It's not a bad thing. Um actually normal people don't realize a lot of times when you're doing poetry or spoken word or even written something written word you're kind of you know it's magic <laughs> uh spoken words words have a lot of power all right so let's see what messages i don't want to just well i want to say you're doing spells you're doing spells when you do that if you if you, if you didn't know all right so let's see here 
This is for my air signs. This is for Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. This is for June 20th through June 27th, 2020. This is for Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. This is for June 20th through June 27th, 2020. What messages, what guidance do you have for Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius? Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. This is for June 20th through June 27th, 2020. Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right. Mm. I think I like that bottom card, if I'm not mistaken. Is it strength? Can't remember. Empress, Bounty. Ooh, target. So something new may be beginning. Some of you guys could have been receiving some good news. Something could be growing. Um, we have the Six of Wands here. So I feel like for a lot of you guys, you are moving toward victory. Teaching Lodge here, um, the Teaching Lodge of Arrows, that's the Queen of Swords here. So some of you guys are becoming very discerning in regards to the things in your life. The, the I don't want to say the burdens, but the, um, I don't want to say burdens. I feel like you're becoming more aware of what your responsibilities are. And I do feel like Knight of Swords, you're in a space of really taking action moving forward. I do feel like with the Ten of Wands, you've reached the peak of gain of whatever burdens you have within your life. So some of you guys, you're really in a space of overcoming some things, let, um, growing and letting some oppressions go. Some things that are oppressing you. So we have the Nine of Swords here. I do feel like for some of you guys, you're dealing with some anxieties here. Seven of Cups, because you're dealing with some confusion. You might have a lot of things going on. Um, strength here. Having the strength to really move away from illusions. We talked about this earlier. Um, power of the Lodge Pipes. So this is the what? Which one is this? Oh, so this is the Queen of Wands. Okay. So we got Queen of Swords here with the Queen of Wands. Now you could be dealing with an air sign or you could be the air sign here in the space of really feeling burdened about taking action, having some anxieties because there's a lot of things that you need to put in order. I do feel like you're in the space of going through a new bounty. You, you probably got a lot of things you got to like put in, in place or put in motion. Yeah, nurturing your cups. So some of you guys, Queen of Cups here. We got three queens here. This is a woman here that's in the space of really becoming the Empress. You're balancing the feminine within you. Even if you're not a woman, you're a man that is balancing the feminine aspects within yourself. This is a woman. The only one I'm missing right now is the Queen of Pentacles. That's the only one I'm missing. So the thing about it is, I feel like you're already in space of looking at a situation sensibly. You're already nurturing a new foundation. You're nurturing a new life for yourself. I do feel like you're moving toward victory. You are needing to be discerning of what's a burden within your life and what is not. I do feel like for a lot of you guys, you do feel burdened by having to go forward, but you're balancing that feminine energy by allowing yourself to grow. Even though you're having some anxieties, there is some confusion. Finding the strength to really move in a new direction within your life and nurture your own emotions or nurture what you feel within side of yourself brings you to this new this gateway it brings you to i mean that's god basically lifting you up into heaven so for a lot of you guys this could be um like a, a, an expression of gaining heaven on earth and i feel like you walked out of hell to get it all right let's clarify of course i don't have my cards out to clarify what the fuck is going on i'm supposed to have my ah, that too they were under my book all right, so we have these six of ones here. Five of six of ones here. Stairway to heaven. Step by step. Do -do -do. Okay, can't do that. My voice ain't that. Do -do -do. My voice ain't that deep. <laughs> so I feel like for a lot of you guys, Queen of Swords, Will of Fortune with the Knight of Wands, you see that you're growing. You see you're expanding. You see that it's time for you to move forward. It's time for things to change. So Emperor, you're already in a space of mastering the energy within yourself. You're already in a space of knowing that you have to take action. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you are in a space of kind of underestimating your abilities because you're in this new type of energy, in this new type of, of environment, but your victory is moving forward. So we have the Queen of Swords here. Okay. Feel like you're being very discerning, cutting away things that do not, um, you know, do not work in your favor. Yeah, Ace of Pentacles. You're seeing clearly that you have a new opportunity. Queen of Pentacles. Here she go. 
here she go. So for a lot of you guys, Queen of Pentacles, Knight of Cups, I feel like you're in a space of balancing your emotions. You're moving by what you feel. You feel like it's sensible to follow your heart at this time because Ace of Pentacles, either you vi visually see a new opportunity or you just feel within your life you want a new opportunity. There's no more waiting. You're going after something new for yourself. Knight of Swords under here, Eight of Wands. You're most definitely moving forward. Ace of Swords. Didn't see this right here. Ace of Swords. So you're most definitely moving forward here. All right. So we got these Ten of Cups here. Okay. So, there, I can't get this to show. All right, anyway, ten of cup, I mean, ten of wands here. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you could be in a space of feeling really burdened, feeling oppressed. Um, I feel like you're having to put a lot of work into something. Or you, some of you guys feel, yeah, you could have, it could have felt burdened by a relationship. Two of cups here. Some of you guys, now for some of you guys, you could be moving forward, having some anxiety and confusion, especially if you're moving away from a relationship. Something could be growing. But for some of you guys, there's a burden about a relationship. Like some of you guys feel burdened, hermit here. You're very much inside of yourself. Six of Wands moving forward. I want to say for some of you guys, especially with that page of Wands, you could be questioning your own worth as a as an empress here, because you could be moving away from a situation, and someone that you could have been dealing with could be moving forward in their life in another connection you don't base your value all, off anyone else's decisions to do anything in their life you are the empress here you need to look at your life sensibly what you're moving away from was a burden so you're free now to really create what it is that you want and you have this new opportunity like all you got to do is take these steps that are necessary stop burdening yourself with stop burdening yourself with the with the rejection of someone else's decision they didn't reject you they rejected the, they rejected the, the connection. They didn't reject you as a person. For a lot of you guys, you're basing your own worth off of someone else's decision. Get out of that. Now, we're not going to talk about the energy anymore because here, this is about you taking action. This is about you overcoming your anxieties, nine of swords here, removing the confusion, understanding that whatever was, was an illusion. Healing from this strength here, queen of wands, finding the strength to move in a new direction and nurture yourself toward this new opportunity. Okay? So this is about you balancing the feminine energy by just allowing whatever it is to be. So we have the Knight of Swords here. Three of Pentacles here. Magician, yeah. Some of you guys, I feel like you're moving away from a, a partnership. Something that you could have been committed to. That Seven Pentacles here. Something that you invested to, invested in. Ten Swords here. It's the end of that. Some of you guys are moving away from it. Whatever partnership, whatever situation you were dealing with, whether it's a relationship, a connection, a friendship, a job, it was a burden. It was a difficult situation. It was also something that was manipulated in some way, shape, or form. So I feel like for a lot of you guys, you're lacking confidence putting things together because you're walking away from something that worked. I mean, it worked for you. However, it worked for you, but it was not for you. So for a lot of you guys, the anxiety is moving away from that and kind of branching off on your own and allowing your own bounty to, to come up or your own like path to shine. So with this Nine of Swords, you are the one, Nine of Swords, Page of Swords, I mean Prince of Swords, you're the one that's got to move away from your own anxieties. Your own cruelty is what's causing you to stay in this imbalanced type of situation. Change, Knight of Pentacles. You have to be very methodical, methodical within your changes. Seven of Cups. I feel like you're more confused than anything, but it's just about removing the illusion, seeing things for what they are. You're in the space of moving toward new, abundant types of energy, but in order for you to move there, you got to see the value of investing in yourself. So we got Seven of Cups here. This is really about healing, nurturing yourself, healing. Um, this is balancing the feminine within. So we got Hierophant here with the Five of Pentacles. Some of you guys are confused. You're worried about a relationship. You could be in a space of having anxiety. Um, nine Wands here needing to find the strength to remove the confusion, remove the illusions. Ace of Cups, you have a new opportunity here. But Eight Cups, this is Eight Cups. In order for you to move toward this new opportunity, you have to be in a space of emotionally maturing. That does mean going through the pain of whatever was in order for you to again grow. Healing. Some of you guys need to find the strength to heal. This is balancing the feminine within you is going to allow you to heal from whatever heartache you or whatever regret you were dealing with previously. So we have the strength card here. And like I said, in this deck, it represents healing. Page of Cups in reverse. Some of you guys are really not, you're not liking the news. Even though it's good news, you're not liking it because Six of Swords, it represents you needing to move forward. So Page of Cups in reverse. A lot of you guys are not following what's in your heart. 
it's good news. You have a new bounty. You're free from some sort of restriction within your life. Chariot here. We got uh, strength here. That's Leo energy. Empress Taurus, Libra energy. Chariot, that's Cancerian energy. For a lot of you guys, I feel like you're just confused and having anxieties. But it's because you haven't fully healed. You need to fully heal so that you can move forward freely and allow yourself to grow, to really step into this feminine energy. And if you're a masculine, this is about healing the emotions within yourself, nurturing yourself so that you can move forward in a new direction, whole. So we have the queen of wands here. We have the fool energy here, taking a leap of faith, five of swords here. Some of you guys, I feel like you're defeated. Some of you guys feel defeated. You feel like maybe it's an unwise choice. You're moving forward here. Lust here. Some of you guys do have a desire. You want to, You just want to be happy. You just want to be happy. But in order for you to be happy, you need to stop underestimating your abilities. Take the leap of faith that is necessary. Taking the leap don't necessarily always mean that you just jump off a fucking cliff. Sometimes it's just about having faith that things are falling in place in your life the way that they need to. And allowing whatever that needs to fall away to fall the fuck away. All right. So we have the Queen of Cups here. I do feel like, with all the Queens, I, I honestly feel like this is a woman that is in the space of, of really balancing her feminine. If it's not a woman, like I said, it's a man that is in the space of balancing the feminine within himself so that he can step into his emperor status. So we have Ten of Wands here with the Queen of Cups. Some of you guys are feeling oppressed. Death card here by this transformation, by this ending. Um, Eight of Pentacles here because you've invested a lot of time challenging information. Some of you guys feel challenged by the fact that the situation is ended because you've invested a lot of your time, your energy. Um, I understand that. But one thing I need you to understand, it doesn't matter what you've invested. And I'm sorry to say it like I'm about to say it, but it's true. It does not matter how much time, money, energy you've invested into any situation. If you were just with someone yesterday and they decided today that they don't want to be with you, you have to accept that for what it is, the reality of what it is. Time invested means nothing when it comes to someone making a decision in regards to their happiness. Okay, You can't get that time back. It ain't like you can say, well, I invested 28 years into our relationship here's my receipt give me my money back give me my time back give me my energy back that time is lost that energy is lost that's why you have to be so discerning of who you allow in your life and how you allow people within your life because once that time is spent once that energy is spent once that money is spent you can't get that shit back it's just it's gone so every day when you get up you have to look at life like that yesterday whatever happened yesterday that's you know people tell me all the time you know, you you so strong. I don't so I don't see how you are able to, you know, overcome and move forward past things that you know you've been through within your life. Because I am one hundred percent aware that I do not have the power in this physical body, in this earth, on this earth, to go back in time and change anything that has happened. All I can do is wake up each morning with a fresh mind, a fresh heart, fresh feelings, and try to live my life to the fullest of my abilities from that day moving forward. I don't hold grudges. I don't be mad. I don't give a fuck. If it happened yesterday, it happened yesterday. I can't change it. The only thing that I worry about within my life is the things that I can change. If I cannot change it, I move away from it. Period. All right, so the last card we have is the Ace of Pentacles. Okay. Why is this Ace of Pentacles here? We have the High Priestess here with the Page of Swords. Now, I'll be real with you. Just because I can't change it and I'm very forgiving moving forward, that don't mean if you don't wrong me now, if you don't wrong me now, I'm going to forgive you and I'm going to move past what you did, but I won't give you any more of my time, energy, space, anything. I mean, I'm going to be real with you and it may be petty for me to say, but you, you're damn near non-existent to me anymore. Once you show true colors in a negative to me, I have no more time or energy for you. I will gladly move away and create that barrier between me and you for the rest of my time here on earth. Okay? <laughs> so don't think that I'm, I'm, I'm sweet. Don't think it's sweet. It ain't sweet, baby. You feel what I'm trying to tell you? It's not sweet. I won't forget. I just don't hold no grudges. Whatever you did, you did. I'm moving on my life. You got to deal with the karma, whatever. That shit going to come back on you one way or another. I don't, it, it don't bother me because I know what I do moving forward. So I'm at peace with myself. So with this, hang, this high priestess here and this page of swords in reverse, no more delays. For a lot of you guys, you know you got a new opportunity in front of you. You know it's time for you to take a page of cups here. Follow your heart. Ten of cups here. That's what's going to lead you to total happiness. That's what's going to lead you to your contentment, your Buddha state. Okay? 
enlightenment, emotional enlightenment. For a lot of you guys, this is about this is what's about to happen. This is the shift. You're going to become enlightened in regards to your emotions. Um, that doesn't mean that you're going to be super happy or super sad. It just means that you're going to become more aware of your emotions and how to how to in high vibration acknowledge and use them moving forward. Okay? So let's see what messages we have moving forward. This is for Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What messages or guidance do we have moving forward? This is for Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What messages or guidance do we have moving forward? This is for Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Give me guidance for Gemini. All right, Gemini, we have Angel of Clear trying to tell you, told you. Says your time of waiting and confusion will soon be over. Okay. What messages do we have for Libra? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oy. Libra, we have God of Spiritual Healing. It says an aspect of you or a situation in your life is need is in need of healing. Okay. What messages do we have for Aquarius? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, Aquarius. We have Angel of Guidance. It says a renewed sense of direction and purpose will soon manifest. Okay. The underlying message for all of my air signs is Angel of Communication. It says communicate clearly and don't be afraid to tell it like it is. Okay. That's all I have. Until next time, air signs.